Hi Pre-Med 101 people! I'm Mike from Prep 101, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to predict acid strength based on some periodic trends. The abbreviation that we're going to use to help remember these factors is ARIO. And ARIO is going to appear everywhere. It's in acid and base, but it also appears in organic chemistry questions. Let's get cracking. First, we have one of the two foundational ideas here, and that is the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. And hopefully at this point, this is not news to you. This is something that people hear so many times it gets kind of like drilled into them. But it's not always obvious exactly how you predict how weak a conjugate base is going to be. So I'm going to give you an easy way to think about it, and that is the more spread out the electrons, the weaker the conjugate base. The more spread out the electrons, the weaker the conjugate base. Any way that you can remember that works for me. Some people prefer thinking about concentrated electrons being unstable. It's the exact same thing, it's just double negativing this. The mnemonic that I recommend using to remember the different factors that affect acidity and basicity is ARIO. ARIO stands for Atom, Resonance, Induction, and Orbital. And on the MCAT, I would say the first three are easily the most important. We're going to go through each one of these in turn. First, we have Atom. This has two different trends, and the one that we're looking at first is within a column. If the atom has a bigger radius, that's going to allow a more spread out set of electrons. Using that, we can compare the acid strength of, say, HF versus HCl, HBr, and HI. Hydrofluoric acid is going to have the conjugate base of F-, and HI is going to have the conjugate base of I-. Based on our periodic trends for atomic radius, we know that fluoride is going to be much more compact, compared with iodide, which is going to be much more spread out. What this means is that fluoride is going to be less stable, so F- is going to be less stable, and I- is going to be more stable. The more stable the conjugate base, the better the acid. And what that means is that HI is the best acid on this list. We have a different trend within a row. Within a row, electronegativity is the main component. So if we have something like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, say we have some organic molecule, and in one example it terminates with a nitrogen group, and in another it terminates with an oxygen group, in this case an amine and an alcohol. Looking at our conjugate bases, we see the following structures. The one with the negative charge on the oxygen is going to be more stable. Just like you learned about with your formal charge rules, a negative charge prefers to be on an element that is more electronegative. It's the exact same when predicting acid and base strength. Since our oxygen-containing molecule has a more stable conjugate base, the alcohol is the more acidic acid. More resonance structures means that the electrons are going to be more spread out. For example, with acetic acid, well, hopefully it's pretty clear we're going to be losing that proton when this thing acts as an acid, and that's going to leave us with a negative charge on this bottom right oxygen. However, that's not all. This negative charge can actually move around. We won't get too much into resonance here, but the negative charge is able to go into that bond, kicking up the electrons from the nearby double bond. What that means 
is that these two oxygens are actually sharing that negative charge. The negative charge has been equally spaced between them. It's spread out between two atoms. Having it spread out between two atoms stabilizes the base, making the acid a stronger acid than it would be without resonance. The third factor to consider is induction. Normally you're going to be considering electron withdrawing groups that are nearby. This is very similar to the conjugate base having a helpful neighbor. And this helpful neighbor is going to stabilize the conjugate base. Let's take a look at a very similar molecule to the one that we saw in the previous example. The difference here is we have a trifluorinated version of it, so that's going to be super, super electron withdrawing. Looking at the conjugate bases, we've got the same resonance, but we're not going to care too much about that in this example. These fluorines are all going to be pulling electron density out of that negative charge, and it's going to be happening for both of the resonance structures. What this is going to do is decrease the electron density on those two oxygens. We saw in the previous example that each of those oxygens was negative a half. In this example, these oxygens are going to have even less of a charge than negative a half, less being closer to zero. We don't know exactly how much it's going to be, maybe negative a third, maybe even negative a quarter or something like that. The point is, they're going to have a charge that is much smaller in magnitude than that negative a half we saw in the previous example. Finally, we have the orbital type. This is a bit of a break in the trend. An easy way to remember this other trend, though, is that S stands for stable. What I mean by that is more S character in a bond, the more acidic. Because remember, a more stable conjugate base or a weaker conjugate base gives you a more acidic acid. Let's take a look and compare these two sections of the molecule. This one on the left, the carbon is going to be sp3. In other words, it's going to be 25% S character. On the right, this carbon is sp2. It's going to be 33% S character. As a result, we can say that this structure on the right is more acidic. Once again, it's more acidic because it has more S character. Having that more S character stabilizes the conjugate base, and a more stable conjugate base means that you have a stronger acid. Finally, it is your turn. Please pause the video and try each of these questions. Good luck! All right, I hope that went well. We have the first one. We'll look at those conjugate bases as usual. And between fluoride, F minus, and iodide, I minus, iodide will have a higher atomic radius, and therefore it is going to be the more stable conjugate base and HI is going to be the stronger acid. Looking at this second example, uh, well, let's go, what's going on here? Well, as usual, we're still going to be considering the conjugate base, so I'm just going to scribble out my acidic protons and consider the conjugate base of the structure. That might not be quite as obvious in the second of this pair, 
but you could go with either one. It wouldn't matter at all. In this example, the structure on the left is going to have resonance. The structure on the right is not going to have any resonance. If it tries to put those electrons into that bond and kick some, whoa, whoa. If we tried to kick electrons out from this bond, it would actually destroy the bond. And as you probably know, based on your resonance rules, you can't break any sigma bonds. So this example on the right has no resonance, meaning the example on the left is going to be a more stable conjugate base, and as a result, this is going to be the stronger acid. Looking at the example on the bottom left now, the difference is whether we have three hydrogens or three fluorines. As usual, we're going to be considering the conjugate base, so let's get rid of that acidic proton and put the negative charge on the oxygens. And here, hmm, we have hydrogens which are not very electronegative. And we'll compare that against fluorine, which is very electronegative. Having those very electronegative groups is going to pull some of that electron density away from the negative charge, spreading out the negative charge, stabilizing the conjugate base, and that means that our structure on the right is the stronger acid. And then finally, we have an orbital type example. We have an sp orbital versus an sp2 orbital. Between those, our sp is 50% s compared to our sp2, which is 33% s. And what that means is our 50% s is going to be the stronger acid. All right, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and best of luck on your MCAT.